In the previous lecture, we reviewed the types of variables, which is a major concept underlying the subject of statistics. In this video, we are going to see how we can describe a single variable. Let us start with a categorical variable. Imagine in a research we had a question regarding smoking with the possible answers yes or no, which makes uh, this variable a dichotomous nominal categorical variable. Dichotomous means two subcategories. Dichotomous data also known as binary data or attribute data. We will see later that there are some advantages in giving the numerical values 0 and 1 to the, to the two categories. The analysis of categorical data, uh, it's dichotomous or uh, more than two subcategories, are expressed as proportions. When shown graphically, we can use a pie chart or a bar diagram to show them. Here is a pie chart and a bar diagram. Describing a continuous variable is not as easy as categorical variable. A continuous variable, such as, for example, here, serum uh, IgM, comes with a large number of different observed values. Here also, uh, we can uh, have the table of the frequencies, as we have here, a histogram, or if we attach the, the tips, we have a polygon that also a descriptive statistic that we can show. We may give more information such as range uh, as minimum and maximum values, but they are not enough. We need more mathematical values to describe a continuous variable. The obvious first step is to calculate the average value. In a statistics, there are several so-called measures of central tendency for describing the average values and the most common one is called the mean. Uh, here we have an example of the 10 cases with the ages and recorded ages and the sum of the all observation uh, divided by the number of the observations as we have here, uh, they are showing us the mean value. In this example, we have data for, for example, uh, 10 participants, let's say in group A, the sum is 340, so the mean becomes 34. The other frequency used uh, for uh, measure central uh, tendency is the median. Uh, the value that comes halfway when the data are ranked in order, like here, as you see from 23 to 60, uh, is, the, is the median. And the number of cases, uh, if it's not even, and we don't have any middle number, then we calculate the median by the mean of the two closest number in the midline. In this case, for example, 30 and 31, and the, me, uh, the median of uh, the whole group is the mean of 30 and 31, which is 30.5. So it's possible that the median is not a number that we already have in, in our uh, data records. But what if two different groups have the same mean value? Does it mean that they are the same, these two groups? It seems we need more mathematical measurements. For this, we can calculate the uh, distance between the observation and their mean. The values are either negative or positive, and the sum of these distances is always zero, which is because of the way that we calculated the mean. This value is always zero. However, if we square the distances uh, uh, before we sum them, we get a quantity that uh, must be positive because we remove all the negatives by the uh, squaring. The average or the mean of the uh, squared differences does give us a measure of the 
individual deviation from the mean and this quantity is called the variance and we show it by the squared sigma note that uh, we divided by 9 here and uh, not 10 and 9 is uh, 10 minus 1 or n minus 1 in general and why we are doing it why we didn't use 10 uh, since the sample is taken from a larger population and wish to use the sample data to estimate the variability in the population uh, we divided it by n minus 1 to, in to include the value of the sample size this minus 1 makes uh, a big difference in a small sample but in a large sample the difference is negligible for example, if we had uh, data recorded on 1,000 people, 1,000 minus 1 is 999, which doesn't make much changes in the value of the uh, mean or the average. But now the sample is very small and minus 1 make a big difference between the values that we get for the variance. So we included the sample size value in our measurements and since we squared the data for variance we can calculate the square root for the variance here is calculation calculation of the square root of 127 is 11.3 uh, we call this value a standard deviation which is usually abbreviated as sd or the sigma the standard deviation is not a good name actually for this statistic as there is nothing standard about it. It may more reasonably be taught of as approximately the average deviation or distance of the observation from the mean. In this example, you can see that the standard deviation for the second group, if we calculate it, uh, has, a smaller, uh, has a smaller value, 4.3 4 in this example. Uh, generally, the standard deviation has a major role in data analysis for showing the distribution of the continuous variable. And one of the most important uh, probability distribution in a statistic is a normal distribution. Well, there are a lot of mathematical equations for the normal distribution, but we really don't need to deal with those uh, uh, the mathematical values because we can actually describe the, uh, the normal distribution only by using the mean and the standard deviations. Many types of statistical analysis of continuous data are based on the assumption that the data are uh, a sample from a population with a normal distribution. So we say if we calculate this data, if we gather data in a sample, probably we assume that this data is distributed normally in the original population. With data from smaller samples, of course, it's difficult to judge the degree of normality. In the distribution of the normal, uh, about 68% of the observations will be within the uh, with, within one standard deviation from both sides, from the mean. And about 95% of the uh, observation will be between the two standard deviation from the mean.